The federal government on Friday said President Mohamed Buhari has put the country on an irreversible road to development in the last one year. It said the country had never witnessed such positive steps in a short time. The Minister of Information and Culture, Light Mohamed, stated these in Abuja at a press conference to mark the first year of Buhari's second term in office. He said the past one year has been momentous for Nigeria as the president has taken some actions, mostly bold and highly visionary, that have now put Nigeria on an irreversible road to sustainable development. The minister listed some of the gains of the administration as power supply, food sufficiency, enhanced security, increased revenue, infrastructural development, amongst others. To analyze this, we have public affairs analyst Leonard Ebute joining us live. Thank you, Leonard, for joining us on the news. Thanks for having me, Ak. It's five years down the line, and the federal government, through the Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, said President Mohamed Buhari has put the country on an irreversible road to development in the last one year. What is your assessment so far? Well, to say the least, that's a, a really curious submission. One, one would expect that um, the last one year with all of the externalities that are inimical to development happening from COVID-19 to the current crisis to the fact that last year was an election year, uh, that, that appears to undermine the credibility of some of the assignments that he has made, particularly when he boosted the game as including growth in revenue. How is that even credible? I mean, Nigeria as a government of the revenue is oil, down almost nothing now. We talk about infrastructure. This government has been a time to govern in the last one year for obvious reasons. I mentioned the election and then COVID. We talk about infrastructure, and I'm wondering, maybe, maybe there are some invisible infrastructure that we are yet to see. Now, I like the part where he talks about visionary okay so maybe there is a vision like i'm um, pretty excited about the vision for power where implementation will commence from 2021 as articulated by the same government but to then say that we will issue a pass mark in advance of the execution of that agenda is to say that this misleading uh, this is not how information dissemination should work from the government. When governments speak, particularly when the information minister speaks, he should not just be conveying the minds of government, but he must also be, 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 be anchoring that in a context that people can, can look to and then say, okay, yeah, maybe this makes sense. It absolutely does not make sense to even make a statement about the last one year of Warri's administration and put a green light to it. Well, critics have had to this. disagree on different grounds with, the, with that position. But which positive areas would you say the Buhari administration so far has made progress? Yeah, so I, I think I mentioned one. Now they were able to share with us um, a, a, a roadmap of where we're going in terms of power supply. That, for me, is what I have always wanted governments to do. Don't just tell me that you're going to improve power supply, but articulate to me step by step those things that you have done or will do to get us from point A to B. And I thought they did that excellently with, with power. They shared the roadmap, I believe in it. They shared the critical stakeholders around its implementation. I think the funding plan and all that, and I thought that was um, a great, um, 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 you know, that was exciting for me. Um, Lena, they Lena, let me interject there. Us. Let me interject there. Interestingly, you, you we're talking about power right now, which, which has been a major issue in this country. But it has been identified as one of the gains of this administration. I remember for, for a long period, there was an issue of the four megawatts that we're trying to add on to our grid. And up to now, we still don't know so much of what was done about that. So how could the place so problematic be one of the gains of this administration? That's, that's exactly the point I'm contending, that it is not a gain. It, with the excitement that I have is with the plan, the execution plan. So you cannot give yourself a pass mark before the exam. 
So you, you've told us this is how I prepared to pass this exam. And then because of that, you want us to start clapping. The truth of the matter is Nigeria still does not have enough in terms of generation. And even what has been generated, we are unable to distribute effectively, right? Because the transmission hasn't been gotten right and all the myriads of problems that were in that sector before Buhari came, none of that has changed, okay? So uh, it, it can't be pointed as an achievement, so to speak. And so if we go sector by sector, if they talked about security, how could anybody talk about security in a Buhari administration that has seen crime from every official source you know, criminality from kidnapping to armed banditry to communal clashes to even Boko Haram has gone on unabated on, under this administration. Mm -hmm. Maybe they made gains in reducing the, you know, the territory holding capability of Boko Haram, but the state of killing hasn't, hasn't reduced. And with deepening hunger, right, particularly in the last one year, the state of violent and non-violent crimes in Nigeria has gone up significantly mm -hmm. from even government sources. So how could you mention that as an achievement, you know? As a Nigerian, Leonard, about... as a Nigerian, what would you suggest as areas of improvement or policies that can drive such? You see, uh, this, thank you so much for asking that question. I think that where Nigeria is now is the kind of, is where we're in an emergency state, and that's made more obvious by the global um, pandemic that is affecting global economies. We need people that are agile. We need people that are not afraid to make mistakes. Buhari's current um, cabinet, particularly in the areas that are cons of, of great concern to us, like the, that, that, that affect the economy directly, they're not nimble enough. I've always contended that as a president, you need, in a country like Nigeria, you need to behave like a startup CEO. You should hire people and have no qualms in letting them go if they're not delivering the work done. So we want very quick short-term gains. What are those short-term gains? When you tell us that Boko Haram is gone, let it be gone. When you say Abuja to Kaduna Road is going to be safe for people to travel on, let's see the next day. When you say if you are a government official and you still you'll be prosecuted, let's not be hearing of cases that have gone to court and have been thrown out for lack of diligent prosecution. This is exactly what um, a, 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 a shambolic anti graft posturing can bring. You've told us that you are making arrests, sensational arrests, and all of that, and then the people go to court and they are out because you didn't do the due diligence to prosecute them effectively, and then you blame the system. We need to see clear agenda around education, around youth um, employment. Even if even the response to this pandemic is not the fact that hunger is a bigger killer than the disease and we are borrowing a Western cure for a disease that is essentially not as lethal to our people from a, a, a medical um, analysis point of view as they took. So over adjusting, following the rest of the world, and refusing to understand that this country has to be jump-started, using very, very, very radical people and very radical steps that may be unpopular, is exactly what this government has not done. And it is exactly why some of us were not very confident about um, a, a second tenure for Buhari, the reason being that he hasn't shown that he can be as nimble as the economy deserves. Leonard Ebute, it's been a pleasure having you join us on the news. Thank you for your time. Thanks.